Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Let's get to the news. Four people found shot after San Antonio police say the vehicle they were riding in crashed into a garage. Coronavirus cases are surging across the country as the death toll has officially surpassed 225,000 here in the U.S. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. That story coming up. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, 73 degrees for now. I repeat, for now, <laughs> things will change soon. I think the bottom is about to fall out. Uh Kind of like Friday night in a yeah. way, but the difference this morning, oh, by the way, it's uh, good morning. It yes. is October 26th. Thanks for joining us. The difference this morning is it's a little messy out there this morning on the roads, and I'm not talking like torrential rainfall, oh, but yeah. it's a little messy. Nuisance rain. I Nuisance think. rain. Yeah. The windshield wiper goes once or twice, and then maybe you're good for a little while. And I, it's funny because I didn't even have to use my wipers coming in this morning, but there, yeah, the roads were all damp. Everything mm -hmm. was wet out there, so just enough to make things slippery. There's a little bit of fog in some areas, and it looks kind of kind of fuzzy out there. And as far as uh, any sort of rain, this is all just some clutter on the radar site, but you see there have been a couple little uh, little spots that have tried to kind of slide up to the north and we'll see some of these light little sprinkly showers throughout the rest of the morning and basically the rest of the day just off and on. It's not going to be raining constantly, but just kind of damp. And as far as visibility, Bernie stage four miles, three Castroville, seven in New Braunfels, and that's really the only well, LaGrange, a little bit of fog there, but we're gonna have to watch out for this to thicken up in the next couple of hours and temperatures. Yeah, way above normal once again. I mean, low to mid 70s around most of the area. A ton of humidity out there. Once again, whole different story from what we had on Friday, but that's going to be changing. 70s around the area. Notice Ozona at 52 degrees and then go further up to the north. It is 23 right now in Amarillo. 50 degrees colder. We won't get that cold, but Colder air is definitely coming on in here. San Angelo is at 48 as of right now, so it looks like the timing of the front is going to be later on late afternoon about dinner time. Mold ragweed are both on the low side, so we'll be in the 70s throughout most all of the morning. Basically steady with some cloudy, some mist, fog, and then later on this afternoon, 80 for a high temperature, a couple of showers around there, and then again, late, the front moves on through. The wind's going to shift around. It's going to get blustery. Temperatures will drop down about 15, 20 degrees over the course of the early evening hours, and then, yeah, get ready for the next couple of days. Details coming up in a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home, and those hoping to head home soon. Either way, whatever that causes you to hit the roadways pretty soon, why not take it a little bit easy? Leave a few minutes early. General application of the brake and the accelerator. We do have some construction on Highway 90. We had that last week there along uh, closer to 151. But inbound I-10, now we do have an accident right there at Frio. Here's that construction, 96th Street. Hopefully, we'll get that cleared up and get everyone moving once again. Mark? Thanks, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating after finding four people shot inside an SUV that crashed into a garage. Happened around 1030 last night in the 2800 block of West Hutchins near I-35 on the southwest side of town. SAPD says the SUV crashed into a pole first, then into a garage. Police say suspects in the shooting got away in a white sedan. The victims range in age from 13 to 37 years old and were taken to a hospital. SAPD says the 37-year-old woman in the vehicle is in critical condition. The crash also knocked out power to some nearby homes. A man in the hospital this morning after he was shot in northeast Bear County. It happened last night. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say they got a call about shots being fired when they found a man shot in the yard in the 7,000 block of Gulf Shore Boulevard. So far, it's not clear to what led up to that shooting. Deputies say a gun was found in the same yard and several vehicles and a home were riddled with bullet holes. The victim, who deputies say was in his 30s, was taken to the hospital. His condition is unknown. Deputies say so far they have no suspects. Turning now to COVID-19 here in Bear County, Home Metro Health officials reporting 140 new cases and no new deaths. However, 15 deaths were added to the county death toll due to backlogged cases. Those deaths happened between July 26th and October 7th. Right now, 237 people are in hospitals with 87 in intensive care and 47 people on ventilators. It's 434. The coronavirus cases are continuing to surge across our country. At least 37 states seeing a rise in hospitalizations. More than 8.6 million Americans have now been infected with COVID-19. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Washington with the latest 
This morning, new milestones in the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. surpassing 225,000 deaths as the seven-day average for new cases hits its highest level on record. We're entering what's going to be the steep slope of the curve. Last week, 20 states and Puerto Rico set new record highs for daily cases, 16 hitting record hospitalizations. In El Paso, Texas, the number of new COVID patients has tripled in two weeks. Medical workers now setting up outdoor tents to house patients. We are at a point in which the, the healthcare system is uh, overloaded. El Paso County now under curfew with non-essential travel banned after 10 p.m. Violators face a $500 fine. In Illinois, a top doctor getting emotional. We are reporting 3,874 new cases for a total of 364, 33 confirmed cases since the start of this pandemic. Excuse me, please. And in New Jersey, Alice Roberts lost her husband, Rob, a police officer to COVID. You hear these numbers in the news and they don't sound very real, but it's very real and it's increasing and it's not gonna get better before it gets worse. Yet in some parts of the country, images like these from Ohio alarming officials. While some parents in Utah are now pledging not to get their kids tested as part of an effort to keep schools open and sports teams running. If there is a quarantine or with a sports team or with any of the other classrooms, they're encouraging each other not to have their children tested. Frequent testing allows rapid identification of children with COVID and this containment actually reduces the rapid spread. The latest surge in COVID cases isn't just in the U.S. New cases are also hitting record in parts of Europe as new lockdowns and restrictions are put in place. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 436 and 73 degrees. So ahead on GMSA, first look at how cities around the country are banning Halloween parades and trick-or-treating as those coronavirus cases surge. Also next, after a rare weekend vote, Senate Republicans are set to reconvene today for a final vote to confirm Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. And outside with live cam, Mike is keeping tabs on this next front, and it's a whopper. He's trying to wave us off, but he's got the details coming up. <laughs> Welcome back to GMSA 440. The U.S. Senate will reconvene today to hold the final vote to confirm Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett. Senate Republicans voted overwhelmingly Sunday to push Barrett towards final confirmation. That's despite Democratic objections just over a week before the presidential election. The vote 54-48. Democrats are poised to keep the Senate in session into the night and attempts to stall. They argue that the election winner should choose the nominee to fill the vacancy left by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Republicans are excited by the chance to install a third justice on the court, locking in a conservative majority for years to come. Chilean President Sebastian Piñera calling the results of the national referendum held on Sunday to scrap a dictatorship-era constitution as a triumph for democracy. The former 40-year-old document was written during the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Preliminary results showed Chileans overwhelmingly backed drafting a new constitution. With nearly 87 percent of votes counted, more than 78 percent voted in favor of the measure, according to Chile's electoral service. Well, the City of Angels may soon have another heavenly moment. The Los Angeles Dodgers beat the Tampa Bay Rays 4-2 in Game 5 of the World Series last night. That means the Dodgers are one win away from a championship crown. Pitcher Clayton Kershaw collected his second victory in the series for L.A. The Dodgers have been in three World Series over the last four seasons, but have fallen short each and every time during that span. Last time, Dodgers won it all back in 1988. Game 6 of the Fall Classic tomorrow night at Globe Life Field up in Arlington. A lot of people watching closely. Yeah, I was watching for a while last night. Yeah. It's a pretty good game. Yeah. Time now, 442 and 73 degrees. Still ahead, a look at how a local couple found true love through their passion for dance. Also, Halloween and the coronavirus, how you can make sure your family stays safe but still having spooky fun. And the coronavirus ruining some Halloween plans. Cities around the country banning parades and trick-or-treating as cases surge nationwide. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Halloween and the coronavirus. We don't want door-to-door trick-or-treating, period. 
El Paso in the midst of a coronavirus surge, tamping down Halloween plans. The city seeing close to 11,000 active cases. Beverly Hills approving an urgency ordinance banning trick-or-treating, restricting giving candy, treats, or toys to anyone not in your household. Warning, rule breakers will be issued citations. Even though it was a difficult decision, it really was the right decision to make in this uh, day and time. So how can you make sure your family stays safe but still has lots of spooky fun? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll show you the creative ideas from parents across the country. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Well, it was the love of dance, specifically ballet, that brought a husband and wife together years ago. The two are now sharing their love with the Alamo City by opening their own studio for others to learn the art. Our Japhne Gray has her story. There is something about walking into this place, seeing the bars, the Marley, the mirrors, and that's your home. It's always been a dream of husband and wife Kadel Cruz and Lindsay Deck to start their own ballet studio. In fact, that dream just recently came true in September when they opened De Cruz Ballet. The goal, to help pre-professional ballet dancers ages 11 and up transition into the professional world. If a student doesn't want to go the ballet route and they want to go to Broadway, they want to freelance, they want to model, they want to do commercial work, they have the tools here. That also includes dance colleges. For Carel, the love for ballet began at age eight in his home country of Cuba. Ballet is, is a beautiful art. And for Lindsay, at the young age of three in Virginia. To use your limbs, to use your soul, to feel the music, to have that passion, that discipline, the dedication. Their individual careers of ballet brought the two together in 2002, working for the Pacific Northwest Ballet Company. We used to go to the back studio and practice uh, just for fun until somebody saw us practicing one day and then we, we got a performance. Together, they reached the highest position you can achieve as a ballet dancer, a principal dancer, which came after a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I have sprained my neck numerous times. He has had a stress fracture in his shin. <laughs> I promise it's a beautiful profession. <laughs> Traveling all over the country, that love for dance grew the love they had for each other, despite being polar opposites. He's cool, calm, and collected, so I really wish that I could be more like that. Sometimes I guess I wish you would calm down a little. <laughs> she was going too, too fast all the time. They got married in 2009 and now have two beautiful sons. Balancing their careers while raising a family has been difficult, but after opening their dream studio together to serve San Antonio, they say it was all worth it. To see the students be excited and to see their progress is, is the best feeling. Cadell and Lindsay sharing their passion for ballet with their community is a sweet love story for what's up. South Texas. And when you keep fighting for yourself and for what you believe in and you trust in God that they're going to lead you in that right direction, you can do anything. Jeffy Gray, KSAT 12 News. What a cool story. Yeah, hold the pose, yeah. smile. <laughs> uh, looks like traffic is going to be anything but graceful this morning. Here's Marcus as the accidents have started to come in. Not graceful at all. Plus, uh, we're finding out that's not construction. Uh, that's actually the exit uh, for Highway 151 westbound to Highway 90 closed due to an accident. Eastbound I-10 over Colorado, that accident still in the clearing stages. That's on the upper deck uh, blocking a couple of lanes there. That one exiting for Highway 151 also closed. Let's take a look at Transguide. There you can see everyone must stay on Highway 90 if you're westbound on Highway 90 in that uh, area. Also here is the one I-10 in Culebra. As you can see, everything down to just one lane on the eastbound main lanes on the upper deck. So if you normally come into town through I-10 uh, from the uh, northwest side, stick to the lower level. It'll be much easier. Good advice. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, we need that kind of advice this morning, Marcus. <laughs> Oof, rough start to the work week. Mike, that's an interesting picture behind you there. I have to look over your shoulder. Okay. Oh, yeah. At first I thought it was snow. I'm like, that can't uh -huh. be here. Duck, <laughs> duck, <laughs> no <laughs> goose. Good day for ducks. Today's pretty was, good day for ducks, too. Who was so. doing the duck sounds? That was good. Was yeah. it Marcus? Marcus, probably. Yeah, it was really no, good. No, he said no. <laughs> anyway. Hey, uh, 
Well, here's a look outside, and it's just kind of murky out there. And uh, just kind of adding to what Marcus was talking about, yeah, everything's kind of damp. There, there really isn't any rain showing up on radar right now, but it's just a lot of some mist and some leftover stuff. So it's damp. It's uh, very muggy out there as well. Nothing, like I said, on this is a little bit of clutter. There's been a couple little sprinkly showers here and there, and we'll probably see uh, maybe even a couple more. There have been a few of them in the past few hours around here. Here's what the uh, computer models are looking like, and we'll keep a few little light showers around here. Notice right here along this line, that is the, the wind shift line, and that's going to start to work its way through, uh, especially out in the hill country. Obviously, first of all, temperatures will be dropping down, and then I think about dinner time here in town, five o'clock, six o'clock ish, and winds will shift around, and then temperatures will be dropping down, probably about a good 15 degrees uh, within 15, 20 degrees within an hour or two this evening. We'll still keep a little bit of uh, some light rain around here, and the rain's going to be picking up as we go into tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have some showers around here, also some breezy conditions. So here's another look at just exactly when this front kind of comes on through here. The high dew points around uh, southeasterly wind, and then again right around mid afternoon, you see out in the hill country winds will shift around. Drier air comes on in here, and again about late afternoon or dinner time is when that uh, wind shift takes place, and we keep this dry air around here. Now that doesn't mean it's going to dry out because we will have the showers around, but uh, we're going to be seeing yeah the whole different change with very warm and humid this morning and then this dry air comes on in here for the rest of the week the, the end of the week the last latter half of the week is going to be absolutely gorgeous tomorrow my book is going to be gorgeous as well but it's going to be just cold and blustery and damp and satellite picture right now doesn't have much going on here, but there's a whole lot of snow and some wintry precipitation northwest of the hill country. There could be some mixed precipitation, not it's looking like in our area because this is a very, very shallow layer of cold air around here. Yes, it will knock temperatures down, but we're not going to be seeing any of that stuff around here. But look at some of these temperatures negative four right now in Casper, Wyoming. Eight as far south as Denver. Oklahoma City is just above freezing. So, yeah, it's going to be cold and it's going to be sticking around for a few days. So, it looks like after a very warm most of October, it's going to end up feeling like. Gee, October, that'll be a nice change. 78 degrees today at noon. Temperatures won't move all that much throughout the day. Obviously, since we're starting off very, very warm in the low to mid 70s, and then we top off at 80, and that's going to be late afternoon. Front comes on through here. Temperatures will drop down, and we'll have those showers. Very windy conditions. It's going to be windy tomorrow. Showers, temperatures only in the mid 50s. Grilled cheese and soup kind of day tomorrow, Wednesday rain as well. Then we clear on out. It is going to be beautiful Thursday, Friday, the weekend. Got a full moon on Saturday. It is Halloween and before you go to bed, yes, you set your <laughs> clocks back. It is a hat trick as far as what's going on this weekend. It's going to be a wild and wacky weekend. Halloween, full moon and clock. Oof. Yeah, and clocks. Event eventful. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Though. Lock your doors. <laughs> oh, Mark. Oh. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> no, I just watched the movie The Purge. I was just thinking. Oh, sorry. That's uh, 453, <laughs> 73 degrees. And coming up next, some more wins for the box office as new movies bring in more money from moviegoers. Pick three numbers this morning 868 Fireball 3, Daily 4, 7093 Fireball 6. Cash 5, 8, 12, 27, 28, 30. Lotto, Texas 5, 10, 27, 36, 38, 44. And your Powerball numbers, 18, 20, 27, 45, 65, Powerball 6, Power Play 2. Good luck. Adele returns to Saturday Night Live and more movies are set to debut in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. 12 years after making her show debut as musical guest, Adele returned to Saturday Night Live this weekend as the host. Not that she didn't sing. Can I steal him for a sec? There's a fire starting in my heart. She lampooned her own trademark dramatic style in a spoof of ABC's The Bachelor. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Overnight numbers rate Adele's SNL edition. With musical guest Her, the season's second highest after the Chris Rock hosted premiere. His real name is Thomas Dolan, former Marine, demolitions. Another box office victory, such as it is, for Liam Neeson's Honest Thief. It took in another $2.4 million over the weekend. 
MGM reportedly considered selling No Time to Die to a streamer for 600 million bucks, but in the end decided to stick with the April 2021 theatrical release for the next James Bond movie. And country superstar Keith Urban's 53 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. I was reading about No Time to Die, and MGM was shopping that film for the services like Apple and Netflix. Do you hear how much they wanted to charge? No. $600 million for the really? rights to go straight to streaming. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot of money. I mean, well, that's the market now. That's what... <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of them just bought Coming to America, uh -huh. the sequel, yes. for many, many millions of dollars, but it was nowhere near $600 no, million. That's, oh, my goodness, that's a lot. Yeah, no wonder Apple or Netflix balked, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people are going to watch, though. <laughs> yeah, when it comes out in April. If it comes out in April, we don't know. Yeah, we'll keep we you posted. <laughs> 458, 73 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, we're going to tell you how many people have voted so far in the 2020 election as the candidates get ready for their final week on the campaign trail. Ever order ice cream at McDonald's only to be told the machine is broken? Yeah, all of us. We'll tell you about a website that tracks every broken Mickey D's ice cream machine in the U.S. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man's in serious condition following a hit and run crash on the northeast side. We have the details. And with just eight days until Election Day, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden make their final push for votes. Did you like Friday night? It was a little on the chilly side and breezy, <laughs> but that may pale in comparison to what could happen later on today. Mike Ostray is going to tell you what kind of jacket you're going to need for days to come. Exciting. Good morning. It's October 26th on Monday. Thanks for joining us. All right, so this is the other front, Mike, and our weather team were talking about last week. Get us up to speed, Mike. Yeah, and this one's got some rain associated with it uh, for the next couple of days, so it is going to be on the wet side. So the jacket uh, you need the next couple of days if it's a little bit waterproof and uh, kind of on the warm side because tomorrow's going to be one of those sort of raw days. Right now, anything but that. Now, if you are going to be out all day long into this evening, you may want to throw a well in light rain jacket or something like that or light little umbrella just with some of the showers. But uh, you might want something for it later on this evening and temperatures today. We will make it up to right around 80. The front's going to come through late afternoon, about say dinner time, obviously sooner in the uh, hill country. Winds will shift around. Temperatures will be dropping off and it will really drop down uh, the next couple of days and not warm up too awfully much. The aquifer went up seven tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours. Allergens mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Now we have had a lot of rain. There's a lot of moisture on the roads this morning. Also slight bits of fog. We've got some around Bernie stage, uh, Castroville, Hondo, a little bit of fog being reported and uh, a little bit off to the east as well around LaGrange. But like is usually the case with some of this fog. Got to watch it over the next couple of hours. There's really not anything being picked up on radar as of right now. Uh, we may see a couple of those little sprinkly showers or it's just some mist out there. Some mid 70s and then look what's going on over there. Northwest portions of the hill country. Ozona's at 50 right now. So the colder air will continue to work its way down in here. 22 it actually dropped down one degree in Amarillo. Won't get that cold, but we will see temperatures not getting out of the 50s tomorrow and low temperatures down into the uh, the 40s. So it's going to be nice around here. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Warm and humid, a couple of showers, maybe a patch or two of fog and then warm front comes through. It's going to turn windy, colder, a couple of showers and then tomorrow just grilled cheese and soup kind of day. Best thing, breakfast, lunch and dinner, grilled cheese and soup. More on how long this nice weather is going to stick around. Look ahead to the uh, Halloween forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And folks, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, those two accidents have cleared. So uh, we're seeing a little bit better conditions out there on the roadways, but things are still slick. 35 at Pine, you can see that so far, no problems there. Moving over 35 at Randolph, that moisture there present in the air. You see that little uh, hue, that glow there to the lights. I-10 and Callahan inbound and outbound lanes. So far, no issues there. Just remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and of course, buckle up. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, a man getting out of his vehicle on the side of the road hit by a driver. That man was last reported in serious condition. It happened around 1130 last night in the 200 block of Weedner Road near an I-35 access road on the city's northeast side. San Antonio police say the man got out of his vehicle for some reason. 
That's when the driver of another vehicle hit him and drove away. The man was taken to the hospital. So far, police have not found that driver who hit the man. Now to the race for the White House. Just eight days until Election Day, and now a new COVID outbreak has hit the White House. At least five people in Vice President Pence's circle tested positive, including his chief of staff. Meanwhile, with polls showing a close race, even in red state Texas, we have learned that vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris will travel to the Lone Star State this week. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. Mr. Vice President, why are you still traveling? Despite a small slip while coming off Air Force Two and a COVID outbreak in his inner circle this weekend, Vice President Mike Pence shows no signs of slowing down, holding a rally in North Carolina last night. We're all standing out here in the rain for one reason and one reason only, and that is that North Carolina and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. At least five people close to the vice president recently tested positive for COVID-19. Pence aide Marty Obst testing positive Wednesday. The White House then revealing Pence's chief of staff, Mark Short, also tested positive. Short was seen here with the vice president Friday. The White House says the vice president and the second lady tested negative Sunday and says Pence will maintain his schedule in accordance with the CDC guidelines for essential personnel. Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, who suspended campaigning when a member of her staff tested positive, took aim at her opponent. I think we have modeled the right and good behavior and they should take our lead. Meanwhile, President Trump at the White House last night handing out candy to children of health care workers and military families. Overnight, the Trump team seizing on the Halloween spirit, releasing this new ad mocking Joe Biden as a zombie. Exhibits aggressive behavior, craves human flesh, and utters incoherent moans and groans. Uh, I don't know. With your help, we can prevent the zombie uprising. Despite all the ads and the two debates, a new ABC News Ipsos poll shows the favorability of both candidates remains relatively unchanged since the summer. So far, an unprecedented 58 million ballots have already been cast in the election, and now a new push to secure ballots after surveillance video captured someone setting a drop-off box on fire in Boston. Officials say 122 ballots were inside, 87 were able to be salvaged and processed. I sent on an urgent directive this afternoon to secure ballot drop boxes, if at all possible, have them in, inside of municipal facilities. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. After day 13 of early voting, 435,505 residents have voted so far in Bear County. Those numbers are included in the more than 7.2 million votes cast in the state of Texas. Remember, starting today, polling hours are extended further. O polls will be open from 8 a.m. through 10 p.m. But the early voting period will end this Friday. That's October 30th. And then the polls open again on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd. That's only nine days away. For a list of locations or things you need to know before voting, head over to our website, ksat.com slash vote 2020. And that because he grew for deaf and hard of hearing people saying Bear County is not doing enough to help deaf voters. The group says voters who need interpreter services do not have the same access as everyone else. The nonprofit organization No Barriers Communications has been getting many messages from the deaf community concerned about not having access to vote of voting close to them. Voters can bring their own interpreter with them to the polls, but the nonprofit says deaf voters in Bear County are being told <coughs> the only voting site where they can get interpreter help is at the elections office on Frio Street. There are some deaf people who live very far away and have no transportation and there's no way to get on a bus or it would be incredibly time consuming in order to get over here. And so it's not an effective way for them to vote and not an equal access the way that any other person could vote. A spokeswoman for Elections Administrator Jackie Kalanen says she will answer any questions on this issue during a news conference scheduled for this morning. Right now, it's nine minutes past the hour, 73 degrees. And still ahead, have you ever been to McDonald's and the ice cream machine just wasn't working? How one man is making his mission to keep track of the broken machines on a special website. And next, what all pet owners need to do before trick-or-treating with their furry friends on Halloween this year. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is 73 degrees, but we are looking forward to, uh, was it grilled cheese and soup weather? Is that what it is? <laughs> the official term? <laughs> Looking forward to it. We're going to check in with Mike after the break.
Halloween is just around the corner. Even though we're in the midst of this pandemic, families will still be trick or treating. And when we say families, that sometimes means your pets. For this year, Animal Care Services has some tips to keep your family safe, including your pets. First and foremost, talk to your kids about the danger of giving your pet Halloween treats. Chocolate of any type, even a nibble, can be toxic and potentially deadly to dogs and cats. Keep holiday goodies away from your pets. Cellophane and foil wrappers, lollipop and caramel apple sticks should be thrown away immediately. They pose a choking hazard to pets. Next, hosting or attending drive through trick-or-treating? Leave your pet at home. Don't risk a bite from a scared pet or getting hit by one of the passing cars. If you opt to hand out candy this year at the front door or in the yard, provide a quiet, safe place for your pet to relax inside. This tip is helpful if you're having a Halloween party as well. Masks and costumes could appear threatening to your family pet. Fear may lead to protective or aggressive behavior like biting or growling. Keep this in mind while the kids or you are trying on your holiday disguises. But it is a holiday and it's supposed to be fun, so feel free to get your pet in on the holiday spirit by providing them a holiday themed treat for them to enjoy or a costume as well. And be smart. Animal care services suggest you keep your pet safe inside for the evening. If you're worried, trick or treaters may scare or bother them. That's right. ACS also warns pets often become the target of seemingly harmless pranks on Halloween. So if you suspect any animal cruelty, you should call 311 or the San Antonio Police non-emergency line. That number is 210-207-SAPD. Guys, back to you. Thanks, guys. Truman has his costume, right? Uh, or the just the boat, the boo the bow tie, the, yeah. the little ghosts on it. Yeah, oh, very dapper. Yeah, he's he's pretty dapper, but he's going to stay inside this year. Yeah, Gordo, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Good plan. Got to protect our pets. 515, 73 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how much Google pays Apple every year to be the default search engine on the iOS platform. I'm Aaron and I'm Margo. We've always done things our own way. Charted our own paths. I wasn't going to just back down from moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis wasn't going to change who I am. When I learned that my joint pain could mean permanent joint damage, I asked about Embril. Embril helps relieve joint pain and helps stop permanent joint damage. Plus, Embril helps skin get clearer in psoriatic arthritis. Ask your doctor about Embril so you can get back to your true self. Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Visit Embril.com to see how your joint damage could progress. Embril, eligible patients may pay as little as $5 per month. In today's Tech Bites, the Justice Department's antitrust lawsuit against Google is reportedly targeting a deal the company has struck with Apple. The New York Times reports Google pays Apple up to $12 billion a year to remain the default search engine on Apple products. Prosecutors argue that deal hurts competition. Remote schooling is helping Chromebooks make big strides on the computer market. Shipments are up 90% over last year. In addition to being less expensive than Windows consoles or Apple MacBooks, Chromebooks also run Google Classroom Room, which is used by teachers and students. If you're craving McDonald's ice cream, a German software maker has created a website called McBroken. It uses a bot to check the status of every McDonald's ice cream maker in the U.S. He started his project after he tried and failed to order a McSunday. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Let's get updated on traffic. If you're just now joining us, the roads are slick and we've already had a few problems. What's the latest, Marcus? And now they're gone. Okay. Just like that. Well, <laughs> well, well that's so, good news. Oh, well, here's the thing is that hopefully we won't have additional accidents come in that quickly to take their place. So we would very much like the rest of the morning just to be quiet. We can hope. Right now, as we take a look at different trans guy cameras, there's 604 at uh, Military over on the west side. You can see very slick out there, 604 at Hausman as well. And then take a look there, Highway 90 at 36th Street. So everywhere you're driving, you're going to encounter these slick conditions. Just remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. 
general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Well, what we're really hoping, Marcus, is that people will stop and listen and actually heed your advice this morning, and maybe we can be accident free for the rest of the day. That would be nice. It would be nice. Yeah, like the weather's going to be nice. Well, yeah, I mean, nice and cold and yeah. wet. And this morning, that one <laughs> uh, picture you had just, I think, told the whole story. It was just kind of murky out there, you know, and mm. a little bit of fog and stuff like that. Cool picture. Contrails of a jet zooming past the uh, the moon, which was halfway to full. Of course, it is going to be a full moon coming up on Halloween. How and appropriate. The, yes, indeed. And it is the, uh, the blue moon because it's the second full moon in a uh, calendar month. So extra special for Halloween. Well, here's talk about murky. This camera is pointed off to the east and this is 410 I-10 area. And you can see there's a little bit of uh, kind of some little specks on the camera lens there. So it's just there's nothing being picked up on radar. It's just that mist and and yuck kind of conditions out there. Like I said, kind of murky, and very warm and humid. It's down to 48 right now in Ozona junctions at 66. We obviously are way above normal by again, a good 15 degrees or so and a lot of cold air Midland just above freezing Lubbock Amarillo down in the 20s right now. And obviously that colder air is going to be moving on in here. Here, notice how it's kind of a broken line, but right along there you can pretty much see uh, that's the wind shift line, which obviously is going to be coming through the hill country first today and then working its way down through San Antonio. I'm going for about dinner time give or take as it comes on through. The wind will shift around. We'll start to get some drier air in here. We'll still have clouds around as well as some rain, but the humidity is going to be dropping down, obviously, and then temperatures will continue to drop down throughout the evening. They'll drop down initially uh, probably about 15, 20 degrees from dinner time over the course of the next uh, couple of hours. We keep some of those uh, showers around overnight, more around tomorrow, and with the cloud cover, the rain, that cooler air in place, temperatures aren't going basically aren't going anywhere tomorrow. We'll start off right around the upper 40s and make it maybe to, to the mid 50s throughout the day. So another uh, computer model stays very humid through mid afternoon and then again late afternoon is when that front starts to move on through here and that uh, drier air comes in windy conditions in behind that front as well. So it's going to finally feel like fall around here and it's going to be sticking around because you know nice front that came through Friday night Saturday was cool and then Yesterday got very warm and humid again. That's not going to be the situation this week. 78 degrees today, a couple of showers, still very humid, obviously. And then we get up to about 80 for a high temperature today. Then the front comes on through here, so that'll be right before the front. Now, that's not going to be the situation in the hill country. It'll stay cooler because the front's going to be coming through sooner, not enough as much time to warm up. Uh, it's going to be windy behind that front tomorrow. Windy, much cooler, some showers around 55. That's it. 46 starting off Wednesday, 65 for a high temperature, then things clear on out. So it looks like a great stretch of weather Thursday through the weekend. Obviously, the first day of November on Sunday, nice, pleasant 75 degrees, beautiful for a Halloween and setting your clocks back, the blue moon, everything else. Great news. Fall, yay. A real fall. Yes, <laughs> and it's fun to have jack o' lanterns on your extended forecast. Which is better, that or that? Both. I, yeah. I like the Halloween one. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and you'll like the extra hour of sleep, well, too. Well, that's true. Or at least the perception of. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. 523, 73 degrees. And coming up next, the NBA Telethon back. More details on how Kevin Hart rounded up a group of Hollywood celebrities for the online fundraiser. Well, as you may know, Jerry Lewis led a Labor Day weekend tradition for decades. And now another comic actor has picked up the torch. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Yeah. There's a 1-800 number. 1-800. Yes. The MDA Telethon is back. Kevin Hart rounded up a flock of fellow celebs over the weekend for the online fundraiser. Hart worked with Robin Thicke on a jingle for the donation line. Kelly Rowland chatted with MDA Shamrock campaign ambassador Maddie Hilaire. Josh Gad got a custom painting from Fabiola Amaya, an artist with muscular dystrophy. And Aloe Black and other celebs performed and made appearances, helping raise more than $10.5 million for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. What is going on? Who are you people? Oh my God, that's... Surely you know who I am. Where is my suite? We don't have a suite. Now, do you have a suite?
The first star-studded teaser trailer is out for The Prom, based on the Broadway musical about self-absorbed celebrities who descend on a small Indiana town to help a high schooler banned from taking her girlfriend to prom. Meryl Streep, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Keegan-Michael Key, Andrew Rannells, and Kerry Washington star in the extravaganza, which hits theaters in December and Netflix on December 11th. High stepping in Hollywood, I'm David Danny. Right now it's 528, 73 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, why the White House Chief of Staff is now saying the U.S. is, quote, not going to control the pandemic. A closer look at what kind of Mexican candy is the overall favorite for people living here in South Texas. Good morning. Happy Monday. It is October 26th. Well, as we uh, go right to Mike Ostrich, you get an update on this latest cold front on the way. You'll probably want a umbrella in the front seat and a jacket mm -hmm. in the back seat. Good not advice. a bad idea. There's not a lot of rain this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, but there is some out there, so the roads are damp. It's more that just kind of light little nuisancey stuff, but everything was damp when I was coming into work, although didn't even have to use the windshield wipers. Some folks will. There are a couple of drops on uh, this lens out here. This camera lens over there by 10 at 410 and temperatures. I mean, yeah, jack in the back seat because it's warm and it's very humid. It's just a muggy and, and sultry kind of a morning out there. Wind is out of the southeast right now, but that's definitely going to be changing by later on today. Today. There is some fog, four miles of visibility at Bernie Stage, Castroville, five, Hondo, six, and uh, some out toward the hill country. We'll have to watch out for more of this to form up this morning and even a little bit up around Fredericksburg as of right now. And then you look at temperatures. So 73 here in town, uh, some 70s, 60s in the hill country, but then go out northwest of the hill country. It's down to 48 degrees, so that's along the front that is going to be working its way through. Obviously, it's going to come through the hill country, first of all, so your temperatures will be much, much cooler. And I mean, this is some pretty darn cold air. It's a very shallow layer of cold air, but it is definitely cold, and we're looking at some really good fall conditions around here. Mold, ragweed are both on the, uh, the low side. So, Today, we stay in the 70s throughout the morning hours, get up to upper 70s by noon, top off at 80. And the front's going to move through, obviously, like I was saying, sooner in the hill country. And then about dinner time, give or take here in town, winds will shift around out of the northeast about 15, 25 miles per hour. Much cooler temperatures it will drop off a good 15, uh, 20 degrees uh, the first couple of hours behind that front. And then tomorrow, well, I think we'll be hard pressed to get back up to 57 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow with some more rain. Good looking day tomorrow. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. It is sloppy on the roads. What's going on, Officer Trujillo? It is not nice out there. Here's some good news, though. We did manage to clear up the two previous accidents, both of them major accidents, one on I-10, one on Highway 90. So you want to reduce that speed, increase that falling distance, and remember, gentle application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Highway 90 and 36th Street, eastbound and westbound lanes starting to pick up in volume. Also seeing heavier traffic 35 at FM 1103. Just remember, watch that speed once you hit out this morning. Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A dispute on the road ended inside a south side home. Police say an SUV crashed into a garage apartment, but they soon found out there was much more to it. All four people inside that vehicle were shot. Our Katrina Weber is live where this ended in the 2800 block of West Hutchins. Now, Katrina, we understand at least one of those victims was a child. Yeah, police tell us that there was a 13 year old victim among those people in the car. They ranged in age from that teenager up to their 40s. Now, when they were shot, their SUV crashed here into this apartment, causing all of this damage. That vehicle went pretty much right inside the house, but police tell us no one inside the house was hurt. The SUV on its way into this house also took out a utility pole, causing a power outage in this area. This happened around 1030 last night. Based on what officers were told, they say there was some sort of dispute that started on the road not far from here, possibly on the Interstate 35 access road. Police say the other people involved in this were in a light colored sedan and at some point someone in the sedan fired into the SUV, hitting the four people inside. All of them were rushed to a hospital and police told us there was a 34 year old woman among them who was in critical condition. They did search for the sedan, but didn't find it. Now, when we got here, we saw CPS energy workers who were just finishing up. It appears that they did replace that utility pole and possibly were able to get uh, the, the, the electricity restored to everyone, except I would say in this apartment. 
Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Cases of COVID-19 rising across the United States. On Friday, the U.S. recorded its largest, largest rather, single-day number of infections since the start of the pandemic. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, some health experts warn that trend is likely to continue throughout the holiday season. The coronavirus isn't showing signs of easing its grip on the U.S. The reality is that the worst could be yet to come and that the beginning uh, has been more or less the warm-up act for what's about to hit. At least 35 states are seeing a rise in new week-to-week -week cases, according to Johns Hopkins University. Some of the worst hit places in the country right now are rural, rural areas, and those health facilities are very quick to be overrun. As for the White House... We're not going to control the pandemic. We are going to control the fact that we get uh, vaccines, therapeutics, and other mitigation areas. Sources tell CNN at least five members of Vice President Mike Pence's staff have tested positive for COVID-19. Pence, who the White House said tested negative for the virus on Sunday, spent the weekend on the campaign trail. COVID is a reality that they don't want to face. This has been a failure, and they're just not going to talk about it now and they'll just pretend that it's just not happening. The University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation predicts more than 100,000 lives could be saved through February if 95% of Americans wear masks while in public. We know that it's easier to wear a mask in the winter than it is in the summer, and I think it would be very reasonable to put forward a mask mandate. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The United States will soon have its first African-American Roman Catholic Cardinal. He's Archbishop Wilton Gregory, who serves in Washington, D.C. Now, Pope Francis named Gregory and a dozen others for elevation on Sunday. Gregory will become a Cardinal during a ceremony November 28th. He came to Washington from Atlanta after his predecessor resigned over his handling of the church sex abuse scandal. The church says Cardinals help elect a new Pope when one retires or dies. On Wall Street this morning, stocks will try to make up some lost ground from last week. Friday ended a three-week win streak for both the Dow and the S&P 500. Investors had become more optimistic about a new coronavirus stimulus package, but stalled talks in Washington Friday drove home the reality it may never happen before the election. And good news about expanding manufacturing was not enough to let the Dow out of the red. And time now is 537 and 73 degrees. Still ahead from the sweet to the sour to the spicy, we're checking out the favorite players, flavors of Mexican candy here in South Texas. And the choices are endless. Looks good. And next, a look at winter weather, a possible hurricane, and critical fire weather conditions all set to impact the nation this week. Well, outside with live cam, if you had a chance at all to watch any of that football game in Denver yesterday, that's like kind of a little taste of what's headed this way. Not snow, but definitely colder and wetter around here. Mother Nature about to remind us it is the end of October coming up. Mother Nature packing a punch with Tropical Storm Zeta threatening the Gulf Coast and fire danger ramping up in the west. There's also a winter storm headed for the Mountain West to the Central Plains. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, it's all happening this week. Target. Fire and ice. Oh yeah, and rain. All this week. We start with ice from Sunday through Tuesday. Battling old man winter, even though it's still fall. Temperatures falling to record levels. Look at this, negative 29 degrees Sunday in Potomac, Montana. But CNN meteorologist Tyler Malden says get used to it. A long duration of below average temperatures for many of us across the country. And more than 10 million people under winter weather alerts. Look at all the snowfall we're going to see across the northern Rockies and going on into the plains in the Midwest. The snow will help firefighters battling wildfires in Colorado, but in Northern California, Monday means critical fire weather conditions, which will eventually shift to Southern California, all because of strong Santa Ana winds combined with very low humidity and the dryness. And that means the potential for rapid fire growth and extreme fire behavior. Down south, folks are keeping an eye on Tropical Storm Zeta, expected to become a hurricane by early Tuesday and make landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast Wednesday. But CNN meteorologist Allison Chinchar says where it makes landfall might not matter. 
One of the biggest threats will be, regardless of landfall, the amount of rain. Widespread amounts from this, not just along the coast, but even farther inland. Louisiana has already taken a beating this year. If that's where Zeta makes landfall, it would set a record for the most landfalls there in a season. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And time now is 5.43 and 73 degrees. Next on GMSA, why Delta Airlines has decided to ban a certain group of people from flying on their aircraft. And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, the parent company of the Dunkin' and Baskin Robbins chains might go private. Dunkin' Brands confirms it's in talks with Inspire Brands about that company acquiring it. Now, the New York Times says it has two sources who say the deal could be worth $8.8 .8 billion. Dunkin' dropped donuts from its name two years ago to present itself as a beverage company. This year, it closed about 800 shops. It's set to announce its earnings on Thursday. Delta Airlines has banned more than 400 people and counting from flying for not following its mask policy. In a new memo to employees, Delta CEO says 460 people are now on the no-fly list for refusing to comply with the company's mask requirement. Delta began requiring that passengers wear masks on flights on May 4th. It says the policy is to protect the health and safety of both passengers and crew. All major airlines now mandate that passengers wear masks in the absence of any new regulations from the federal government. Mexican candy, a San Antonio favorite with a storied history. It's the top of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. That episode will be out on Thursday, just a few days before Halloween. Here's Myra Arthur with a preview. From the sweet to the sour to the spicy, the flavors of Mexican candy are familiar to most South Texans. I have the memories of like hearing the ice cream man go like down our street and like hearing him being like, oh, and like asking my mom for a dollar just so I can go get this candy. Here in San Antonio, it's not hard to find obleas, cocadas, and of course, chamoy. And chamoy has even become a staple in bars. It makes their, their drink go it gives them that extra burst that they love, that sour taste. And ice cream shops. I love the taste of the mangonera. The sour, the little kind of spicy chili. Behind the flavors of all these treats is a rich storied history that includes innovation and evolution. The most ancient cultures have what? The longest culinary history. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we'll talk about that history, the wide range of flavors, and how Mexican candy has become an important part of Mexican American and South Texas culture. Thursday the 29th, how early is too early for a manganata? Uh, never too early, I think. Good, good it, would, it would be great for both of us My right now. My mouth is watering. <laughs> I know, it I, looks they, good, She right? said chamoy and all of a sudden oh. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> <laughs> salivating. Yeah, Me too. Still, I say the sun is past the yard arm somewhere, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, does that look good. Anyway. We'll check the roads first. <laughs> yeah, let's check the roads right now with Marcus. What's the latest, sir? Well, no eating and driving or drinking and driving mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. as we take a look at the roadway. Uh, not too much going on right there. Uh, as you can see, everything looks great. We had some accidents earlier this morning tying up a westbound Highway 90, exiting for 151, and also eastbound I-10 on the upper deck. But things are looking much better now. However, as far as accidents are concerned, but the roads are still slick. And just look at that spray there being kicked up uh, along Highway 151. Now, those connector ramps, you want to slow down well ahead of any of those long turns and curves in general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Thank you, Marcus. Friday, Mike, you spent all morning talking about that front, and it still caught some people off guard Friday evening. <laughs> it, it That's had a little, true. That's well, true. Yeah, no, I was going to say, it had quite a, oh, quite it, a punch mm -hmm. to it. It so. really did. It got chilly out there quick uh, right down at sunset. Almost a little bit more than uh, expected, and mm -hmm. we've got another one coming in here, and this one's going to last a few days as well, which is nice. First of all, beautiful view of some uh, flowers out there, and they're getting a little bit of moisture. Now, uh, it was a great picture that, that Marcus just showed with some of that uh, those drops on the camera lens and the wet roads, but there's nothing being picked up on radar right now, so it is very, very light stuff. It's just enough that it's making the roads nice and slippery out there, so just definitely take it easy, as Marcus has been saying all along. Now, temperature. We are 73, uh, 70s around most of the area, Fredericksburg 69, but Ozona continues to drop down. It's now down to 46 degrees, so the colder air is continuing to invade. Obviously, it's going to come into the hill country, first of all, so you won't get as warm later on today. And, well, 
talk about temperatures dropping. It's now down to 21 in Amarillo. So all this cold air is going to continue to just work its way down into the area throughout the day. We will have the front move through here. It looks like late afternoon or maybe about dinner time. We'll see the wind shift around and then also the colder air start to move in here later on. So it's going to be very warm and humid up till late afternoon, about dinner time here in town. So we're going to be out after leaving now after dinner time, grab a jacket just to be on the safe side. OK, tropics right now. Uh, we do have a uh, tropical storm which is forecast to become a hurricane. It is Zeta on the Greek alphabet there in the Caribbean. It's going to move into the Yucatan Peninsula, cut right across the tip of that. And it's like deja vu because we've seen this about what four or five times so far this season, and it's going to make a big turn right in toward Louisiana. Again, is this the fourth? Yeah, it's been, I mean, been getting slammed by all these storms around there throughout the uh, the past couple of months. One below in Casper right now, eight in Denver, 34 in Oklahoma City. Also, cold air is fantastic, but we've got a low setting up. And this time around, this thing looks like it's going to be sliding right across us over the next couple of days. So that's going to keep some rain chances around here. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of rain, but you know, a few tenths of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch of rain, perhaps a little bit more in spots is going to be very nice. And this will be through the middle part of the week. Then that's going to get on out of here. The high is going to build back in and that's going to give us a beautiful end of the week. And it's going to stay nice and fallish. Not quite as cool as tomorrow, but still really beautiful weather all the way through the weekend. 78 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers around here. You know, just that light little nuisance sort of rain. That'll be the case this afternoon as well. Here in town, obviously cooler in the hill country, but here in town, we hit 80. Then the front's going to move on through. Winds are going to be picking up. Temperatures going to be dropping down. That'll be late this afternoon, about dinner time. And then tomorrow, starting off 48, 55 for high temperature. That's it. Actually, below the normal low temperature right now for a high tomorrow. And we will stay uh, nice and Nice and pleasant fallish for the rest of the week. So this one has some oomph and it's going to stick around for a while. Yes, and the and the dampness associated with it too. So we like that. And Ready? We, and we were warned on Friday, so like a little warning, and now we have the the real deal. I know, but <laughs> some people that were even in the studio with him weren't listening and were caught <laughs> off guard. Fire pre I know, right? Yes. It worked. Even Yay. without kindling, it just took a while. I Aww. cheated. Uh, 553, 73 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, which is 868, Fireball three. Daily four, 7093, Fireball six. Cash five numbers, 812, 27, 28, 30, Lotto Texas, 510, 27, 36, 38, 44, and Powerball, 18, 20, 27, 45, 65, Powerball six, Power Play two. Good luck. Haven't you heard of peace on earth and goodwill toward men? The re-release of The Nightmare Before Christmas made $577,000 in its second weekend back in theaters, falling to fifth place. On the first night you hear him, and on the second night you see him. And on the third night? Well, on the third night he finds you. Even horror films opening just before Halloween are no longer a sure thing. The Empty Man debuted in fourth place with just $1.27 million. To do what I do, I need some idea of the threat we face. Tenet is showing staying power. After nearly two months in theaters, it remained in third place with $1.3 million. You want me to help you and your buddies. It helped beat up your grandson and his buddies because the two of you can't figure out some way to live in the same house. Robert De Niro and The War with Grandpa took second place for the second straight weekend, earning $1.9 million. Do what you have to do. Liam Neeson isn't done at number one. His latest thriller, Honest Thief, stole off with $2.4 million for a 10-day total of $7.5 million and its second straight weekend title. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we'll have an update on four people found shot in a crashed vehicle and what San Antonio police are saying about possible suspects. A late night crash caused all this damage here on the south side, but police say this is only part of the story. The people inside that vehicle were shot. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And a woman in the hospital after police say she was assaulted and shot at a downtown hotel parking lot. Right now, an officer is still trying to find the suspects involved.
and taking a look out with live cam this morning. 73 degrees, a little humid start to the day, but oh boy, that's gonna change later on tonight. So if you're gonna be out much later, it might be a good idea to grab that jacket. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, happy Monday. It's October 26th. Good morning to you and fair warning, kind of like Friday, you're definitely going to need uh, some sort of outerwear later in the day. But this morning, the big difference is we've had some rain in the overnight hours. Yes. Yeah, and just that it's just kind of a murky morning is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of light rain. I mean, some enough to show up on radar, but most of it's been that mist and drizzled wet roads and lots of humidity out there this morning. And as you can see, there are a couple of uh, drops on the lens over there by a 10 at 410. We've had some accidents on the roads. Marcus is going to be talking more about that in just a couple of minutes. And look at all these temperatures once again, way above normal, about 15 degrees or so above where it should be, but that will all be changing. So here's what's showing up on radar. This is just some uh, kind of clutter around the radar side right there. And there have been, as you can see, a couple little specks that have moved up through here. Most is just a uh, kind of some mist. And, and drizzle out there, and that's going to continue throughout the morning as well as even throughout most of the day. Hints of some fog, basically just kind of the, the murky conditions out there. And as far as the allergens, mold, ragweed are both on the low side. So temperatures right now are in the low 70s, and we're going to be not really moving all that much throughout the day. We'll make it up into the about upper 70s, uh, close to the low 80s by about uh, noon, early afternoon. We'll top off right around 80 here in town. But in the hill country, it's going to be much cooler than that just due to the fact that the front's going to start to move through quicker. And then this is going to be changing once that uh, front moves on through here. And then after that, the winds will be shifting around out of the north and it's really going to start to pick up. We'll have uh, blustery conditions, some wet conditions, and it's going to be much, much colder tomorrow. It's going to be just kind of a throw the covers back over your day tomorrow. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. And yeah, there was a lot going on earlier. Anything now? Not too bad right now. We're okay. off to a very bad start this morning with two major accidents at the very beginning. Uh, one on eastbound I-10 as you're approaching the downtown area. The other one was westbound Highway 90 exiting for Highway 151. Both of those accidents have cleared. Let's take a look at a couple of Transguide cameras right now. 35 at Pine so far, no problems there, all the way through 35 at Randolph. We are starting to see some increases in the traffic, so you don't want to delay too long. Probably want to give it an extra 5 to 10 minutes this morning. Reduce that speed and increase that following distance. Mark. Thanks, Marcus. A call about a crash on the south side has had police investigating a whole different kind of case. They say all four people inside the wrecked SUV had been shot. It happened in the 2800 block of West Hutchins. Our Katrina Weber is live with a live report. We see a lot of damage to the home, but what about the people who were shot? How bad are their injuries, Katrina? The police told us that at least one of them was very seriously injured. A 34-year-old woman who they say was in critical condition they didn't elaborate much about the others, but we do know that one of the victims was just 13 years old. Now, police first found out about them after they got a call about all of this, this a crash here uh, at this garden apartment. Now, after the people were shot, it seems that their SUV went out of control landing in this home. It took out a utility pole, a fence, and then ran into the home. No one inside there was hurt. Officers say that they were told that the people in the SUV had been involved in some sort of dispute on the road around 1030 last night with someone in a light colored sedan. At one point, someone in the sedan fired the shots, hitting all four people in the SUV. The crash also caused a power outage in this area. Now, we saw CPS Energy crews still out here when we got here this morning. Uh, they were just finishing up, so it seems that the electricity has been restored. Uh, this damage, though, here, this is another story. It will take many, many more repairs. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, police are looking for the people responsible for shooting a woman in the arm in a downtown parking lot. They say it happened at the Days Inn Hotel on East Houston and Bowie around 1.30 this morning. Police say a woman staying at the hotel was in the parking lot when three cars pulled into that parking lot. They say some people jumped out of the cars and tried assaulting the woman. Police say one of the suspects then pulled out a gun and shot that woman in the arm. 
The suspects drove off and the woman was taken to Bamsey. She is expected to recover. Police are also searching for a hit and run driver. They say this one happened around 1130 last night in the 200 block of Weedner. That's on the northeast side near I-35 and Randolph Boulevard. Police say a man was walking from the I-35 frontage road down Weedner when a driver hit him. That driver took off and the man was taken to University Hospital where he remains in serious condition. The Bear County Elections Office will hold a news conference today after an advocacy group for the Heart of Hearing said Bear County is not doing enough to help deaf voters. The nonprofit organization No Barriers Communication saying many in the deaf community do not have access to voting close to where they live. The Texas Secretary of State's office says all polling locations should be accessible on its website. But the nonprofit says deaf voters in Bear County are being told the only voting site where they can get interpreter services is at the elections office on Frio Street. There's some deaf people who live very far away and have no transportation and there's no way to get on a bus or it would be incredibly time consuming in order to get over here. And so it's not an effective way for them to vote and not an equal access the way that any other person could vote. The organization says it wants election officials to put iPads at every early voting site, which could be used to access video remote interpreter services. Voters are also welcome to bring their own interpreter to the polls. With eight days till an election day, we're entering the final week of early voting. There are extended times to go to the polls this week. Today through Friday, early voting locations are open from 8 in the morning all the way through 10 o'clock at night. Early voting ends this Friday, October 30th. If you don't vote early, you must wait till Election Day to cast your ballot. You can find a sample ballot in early voting locations right now on the Vote 2020 page of our website, ksat.com. Meanwhile, early voting totals in the U.S. have now surpassed that of 2016. More than 58 million Americans have already voted, and there is still a week left to vote early. Election researchers say both Democrats and Republicans have taken advantage of the early voting period, especially in Texas. Lone Star State currently leads the nation in total number of ballots cast. And if the current pace holds, Texas could be on track to set a voter turnout record with more than 12 million people voting. To national politics, at least five people who work with Vice President Mike Pence have tested positive for COVID-19. That includes the Vice President's Chief of Staff and some of his aides. The Vice President's been in contact with those staffers, but he and the Second Lady have both tested negative. The White House says the Vice President will maintain his schedule in accordance with CDC guidelines for essential personnel. Senator Kamala Harris will make a campaign stop in Texas on Friday. It will be the first time a Democratic vice presidential candidate made a stop in Texas since 1988. The announcement was made via email from former Vice President Joe Biden's campaign staff. The Democratic Party believes Texas could turn blue this year and is making a push leading up to the election. However, President Donald Trump won the state by nine percentage points in 2016. And the last Democrat to win the state of Texas was President Jimmy Carter in 1976. Monday morning time check, 6.08, 73 degrees. And the Cowboys. Whew, the Cowboys look like they are in trouble this season. We're going to have the latest concerns later on GMSA. Where do you even begin? <laughs> and after the break, well, all pet owners, uh, what all pet owners need to know before trick-or-treating with their furry friends coming up this weekend for Halloween. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is a humid 73 degrees, but be prepared for things to change. We are getting that cool front we've been wishing for for a very long time. Mike will have the details after the break. Case at 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. The Alebrijes of Mexico have a history as colorful as the art itself. It all began in 1936 with artist Pedro Linares. At the age of 30, he became ill with a fever and began to have some interesting dreams, hallucinations, if you will. During these dreams, brightly colored, strange animals would appear. And Linares kept hearing the word alebrijes as he slept. When he woke up, Linares began recreating these mysterious animals out of paper mache, sculpting them to display different body parts from different animals and painting them in vivid, bright colors. No two are exactly alike. 
These pieces of art grew in popularity and eventually became a staple in the Oaxaca region of Mexico, where many are now made of wood. This celebrated art can be found year-round and on Day of the Dead when they're placed on altars and used as decorations for the special celebration. Halloween is just around the corner. Even though we're in the midst of this pandemic, families will still be trick-or-treating. And when we say families, that sometimes means your pets. For this year, Animal Care Services has some tips to keep your family safe, including your pets. First and foremost, talk to your kids about the danger of giving your pet Halloween treats. Chocolate of any type, even a nibble, can be toxic and potentially deadly to dogs and cats. Keep holiday goodies away from your pets. Cellophane and foil wrappers, lollipop and caramel apple sticks should be thrown away immediately. They pose a choking hazard to pets. Next, hosting or attending drive through trick-or-treating? Leave your pet at home. Don't risk a bite from a scared pet or getting hit by one of the passing cars. If you opt to hand out candy this year at the front door or in the yard, provide a quiet, safe place for your pet to relax inside. This tip is helpful if you're having a Halloween party as well. Masks and costumes could appear threatening to your family pet. Fear may lead to protective or aggressive behavior like biting or growling. Keep this in mind while the kids or you are trying on your holiday disguises. But it is a holiday and it's supposed to be fun, so feel free to get your pet in on the holiday spirit by providing them a holiday themed treat for them to enjoy or a costume as well. And be smart. Animal care services suggest you keep your pet safe inside for the evening. If you're worried, trick or treaters may scare or bother them. That's right. ACS also warns pets often become the target of seemingly harmless pranks on Halloween. So if you suspect any animal cruelty, you should call 311 or the San Antonio Police non-emergency line. That number is 210-207-SAPD. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much. Well, right now it's 616. If you've hit snooze a fifth time and are just now waking <laughs> up, we've had some rain in the overnight. The streets yeah. are a bit on the slick side. Yeah, it's OK. It's Monday. Take your time, especially on the roads, I guess. Hit snooze a fifth time. That sounds like the voice of experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, at least three times. At least, mm -hmm. at least three times. Did yes. the alarm clock go flying across the room? Uh, that's no a, comment, it's huh? a phone. That's, a phone that's, that's how you break a phone. <laughs> Well, uh, here's another way you can break a phone is uh, being on your phone while you're involved in an accident. So make sure you put away those distractions this morning. Uh, you need both hands on the wheel. Right now we're looking at the westbound main lanes of 1604 right after that entrance ramp from westbound Highway 151. So northbound 1604 right after westbound Highway 151 entrance ramp. That's where we have an accident being reported. A little bit of slowdown there on the ramp. No significant slowdown just yet. However, it is slick out there. Remember, you will have to reduce that speed, increase that following distance. This is 1604 at Housman. You can see everything out there. Slick spray being kicked up. Hopefully, during the week, you check those wipers. Make sure they're working good. Yeah, and also start thinking ahead about uh, tire pressure check, too, with the tire pressures, the hoses. Just make sure everything's okay. Yes, sir. Pop off your fluids. Good to be prepared, mm -hmm. especially when headed outside later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the picture, picture. behind him there yeah. tomorrow yeah. morning, are we it's going to look the same, but just minus about what 30 degrees uh, <laughs> minus about uh, yeah, 20, 25 degrees. So we'll okay. be uh, about upper 40s tomorrow. Yeah, same uh, situation, though, and then it won't warm up all that much throughout the day. So uh, today it's not going to warm up all that much, just given the fact that we have such a warm start. We're in the low 70s right now. Cloudy, there's some mist, there's some fog out there. And then later on this afternoon here in town, going for 80 for a high temperature. A couple of uh, sprinkly showers around. Now, it's not going to be anywhere near this warm in the hill country because the front obviously will move through sooner. So the front will come through dinner time here in town, give or take, and the winds will shift around out of the uh, northeast 15, 25 miles per hour. And it's going to be very blustery. Okay, here's a picture just because if you want something to smile at, look Aww. at this little pup, isn't she? Good? And notice the caption watch. setting up to watch your favorite news team. Oh, that's that's all now. Uh, Steph, are you jealous? Do you want the pigtails or the chair? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Steph, if, Both. If, if we know Stephanie, she wants the chair. So. Yeah, <laughs> but what an adorable! Thank you very much for the case at Connect picture and wonderful taste in in TV news for that young lady. So, hey, there's the murky kind of picture out there as of right now and. Humidity, dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, they have gone up 
20 degrees or more since this time yesterday. That's how much humidity just surged back on in here, and that's why we've had this mist and drizzle and a little bit of a fog around the area, and it's going to stay very humid throughout most of the day. And depending on where you live, obviously, but the dry air is going to come in during the afternoon hours out there in the hill country as the front works its way on through here. And then late in the afternoon, again, about dinner time or so is when the wind shifts here in town, drier air starts to come on in. And now that doesn't mean it clears things out of here. This is a very shallow layer of cold air, so we'll still have a lot of clouds, a lot of moisture on top of that, and we'll still have some mist and drizzle and some light sprinkly showers around over the next couple of days. Temperatures 73 in town, 60 now in Junction. It's dropped down even further in Ozona, so that cold air will continue to push on in here. 21 in Amarillo and 29 right now in Lubbock. Yeah, and that cold air comes in. We're not going to get that cold, but like I said, temperatures by tomorrow morning will be down around the upper 40s and then not going to be warming up all that much throughout the day. 78 degrees today at noon, couple of showers around here and we top off in town about 80. Not as warm in the hill country because the front moves through a lot sooner, but when the front comes on through, winds will shift around, pick up out of the northwest 15, 25 miles per hour and then tomorrow as I've been saying, it is a grilled cheese and soup kind of a day. I already have pulled out the recipe for the cheesy chicken tortilla soup that we like to make. Which Ooh, is wonderful. Nice. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Oh. 65 on Wednesday after starting off 46 degrees. Then we clear out uh, for the rest of the week going into the weekend. And the nice thing about it, too, is because like Friday front moved through. Saturday was a cooler day, but then, you know, warm yeah. back up. Yeah. This is going to stick around for a few days. Who, all in Good. favor of Mike starting a, f a fall food blog, say aye. Aye. Does that mean I have to do all the cooking for everybody? Mm -hmm. I think yes. so. Nay. Even better. I think so. I'll do dishes. I'll do dishes <laughs> if that helps. Maybe. Okay. Think okay. About it. All right. I'll help with dishes. Ralph's like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> for the sampling. <laughs> 620 right now, 73 degrees. And coming up, Halloween celebrations could be in jeopardy around the country amid a surge of coronavirus cases. We're going to have more in today's GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Tell Roomba to vacuum in front of the couch. Experience clean in a whole new way. Now Roomba offers you personalized cleaning suggestions and vacuums exactly where you need it. By getting to know you and your home, Roomba makes cleaning easier than ever before. So say goodbye to cleaning and hello to clean. Hey Google, tell Roomba to vacuum the dining room table. Roomba and the iRobot Home App, only from iRobot. New number seven advanced retinol night concentrate from America's number one serum brand. Five times more retinol than the number one retinol serum, yet formulated to be gentle on your skin. New number seven advanced retinol night concentrate. Beds get sick too. Protection. Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing bacteria. Detergents leave behind. Proven to kill COVID-19. In this morning's GMA First Look, Halloween and the coronavirus. We don't want door-to-door -door trick or treating, period. El Paso, in the midst of a coronavirus surge, tamping down Halloween plants. The city seeing close to 11,000 active cases. Beverly Hills approving an urgency ordinance banning trick or treating, restricting giving candy, treats, or toys to anyone not in your household. Warning, rule breakers will be issued citations. Even though it was a difficult decision, it really was the right decision to make in this uh, day and time. So how can you make sure your family stays safe but still has lots of spooky fun? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll show you the creative ideas from parents across the country. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It was an ugly weekend for Texas teams in the NFL. First, the Cowboys blown out by the Washington football team in Landover, Maryland yesterday. Cowboys kicked a field goal on the first, but that would be it for the rest of the game. Third quarter, more trouble for the boys. Andy Dalton filling in for an injured Dak Prescott. 
gets hit helmet to helmet while sliding. He would not return to the NFL concussion protocol. There is that hit, hit and it led to an ejection. So bring in Cowboys rookie Ben DiNucci from James Madison University. He would finish it out, but Washington goes on to win in a stunner, 25 to 3. Next up for the Cowboys, division rival Philadelphia Eagles. That game scheduled for Sunday night at 7:20 in Philly. Things not much better for the Texans who hosted the Green Bay Packers. Packers, one of the top teams in the league, and it showed early on. Green Bay went up 21-0 in the first half, and quarterback Aaron Rodgers would drop four touchdown passes on Houston. Uh, Deshaun Watson would have a pretty good game, throwing for 309 yards and two touchdowns, but they could not get it done. Packers win 35-20. Texans have a bye week, so their next game won't be till November 8th when they take on the really bad Jacksonville Jaguars. It's been tough for our Texas teams. Extra tough this year. Mm. It's been tough to watch for a lot of <laughs> Yeah, especially, especially yesterday. Especially <laughs> Cowboys fans. Yeah. yeah, that was bad. All right, time now, 626, 73 degrees. Coronavirus cases surging across the country. We'll see how it's impacting our nation, including El Paso. A cold front is expected to come through San Antonio this afternoon on GMSA at 630. Mike will tell us just how cold it will get tonight so you can pull out the proper jacket. Yeah, the proper one. <laughs> like a Police answering a call about a crash here find that there is much more than just this damage. Four people shot inside that vehicle. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Coronavirus cases are surging across the country as the death toll has officially surpassed 225,000 here in the U.S. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. That story coming up. And outside with live cam, did you like Friday? Did you like that colder weather just kind of blew in? Well, get ready. Mike is tracking a big, big cold front. So big, we put everything in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of what we do anyway. But good morning to you. It is Monday. It is October 26th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. And I'm glad we have them in big letters because on Friday, you know, we kind of said, hey, it's going to get cold. And then, you know, people brought maybe like a light sweater to the football game and then like, oh my goodness, it's freezing out here, so. Yeah, we're really gonna have to bundle up by later tonight, Mike? Yes, and then especially tomorrow. And the, I think the, the all caps kind of emphasize the fact that this is not just gonna be some colder temperatures, mm -hmm. but then also it's gonna sort of look like this. It's gonna be damp and windy along with the colder temperatures. Just a wonderful day tomorrow. And this morning is not wonderful. It is just murky out there. As you can see, there is some, uh, just a little bit on the, the lens, some, some drops. It's been a lot of light mist and drizzle even a couple of uh, sprinkly showers out there. Temperatures are, oh, 15, maybe more than that degrees above normal. The humidity is sky high. Dew points have just surged back in here overnight. All that moisture has. We are seeing a little bit of light rain. This is uh, basically clutter around the radar site, but uh, there are a couple little spots up there around San Marcos, and a few of them have been moving through town. Most of it has been, like I said, on the uh, kind of mist and drizzle side, but most all the roads are damp this morning, so that's making things very slippery out there, obviously. Bernie Stage 4 miles visibility. The fog is not a huge deal, but just kind of watch out over the next uh, couple of hours if that decides to uh, thicken up. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. And uh, this morning, warm, humid, couple of showers, fog. And then later on this afternoon, it is going to be very warm. We'll make it up to 80 today. And then the front's going to move through, obviously, sooner in the hill country. Here in town, about dinner time. It'll turn windy. It'll be colder. We will have some showers. And then tomorrow, as I've been saying all along, grilled cheese and soup kind of a day. It's going to be fantastic. And also beautiful weather. Nice, cool fall temperature is going to last all the way through the rest of October. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Marcus Trujillo. And it is messy out there. And see a little bit of something over there by the airport. There's something by the airport and also something out there by Culebra and Highway 151. So two incidents that we're uh, currently clearing. This one by the airport is affecting the two left-hand lanes of westbound 410, just past the airport right there at McCullough, so keep that in mind. Second one here, still clearing this accident, uh, northbound 1604. I'm sorry, yeah, northbound 604, just past Highway 151 before you get to that Culeva Road exit. Now back to that airport accident. Here you go. This is a trans guide shot. The two left-hand lanes closed. We're already seeing some stacking, and this is not the time or the location for this kind of accident. Hopefully we'll be able to get these vehicles off the roadway, get everyone moving once again. Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. 
Four people, including a 13-year-old child, are being treated for gunshot wounds after a shooting on a south side road. Police say they were all in an SUV when they got into a violent dispute with someone in a car. Their vehicle then crashed into a home in the 2800 block of West Hutchins. Our Katrina Weber is live there with a report. Now, Katrina, do police know what the dispute was all about and could this be a case of road rage? Well, that's one of the things they are still working to understand. All they've been able to tell us right now is that all of the people involved were in vehicles and that this dispute appears to have started on the road somewhere. This is where it ended, inside this house for the people in the SUV. They crashed right into what had been uh, a garage apartment. They also took out a power pole along the way. Now, by the time it was over, a lot of damage here. Police say this may have started on the Interstate 35 access road nearby around 1030 last night. They say at some point, someone in a light colored sedan fired shots into the SUV. Police were called first about the crash, then realized everyone inside the SUV had been shot. Among them, again, a 13-year-old, as well as a 34-year-old woman who police say was critically injured. They all were rushed to the hospital. Police, meanwhile, searched for the SUV but didn't find it. The CPS Energy crews spent all night repairing that power pole and then working to restore electricity. But again, the damage here to this house will call for some major repairs. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Coronavirus cases are continuing to surge across the U.S. with at least 37 states, states rather, seeing a rise in hospitalizations. And Texas is among those states, with El Paso seeing a dramatic increase in new cases, prompting strict lockdown measures. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. This morning, new milestones in the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. surpassing 225,000 deaths as the seven-day average for new cases hits its highest level on record. We're entering what's going to be the steep slope of the curve. Last week, 20 states and Puerto Rico set new record highs for daily cases, 16 hitting record hospitalizations. In El Paso, Texas, the number of new COVID patients has tripled in two weeks. Medical workers now setting up outdoor tents to house patients. We are at a point in which the, the health care system is uh, overloaded. El Paso County now under curfew with non-essential travel banned after 10 p.m. Violators face a $500 fine. In Illinois, a top doctor getting emotional. We are reporting 3,874 new cases for a total of 364, 33 confirmed cases since the start of this pandemic. Excuse me, please. And in New Jersey, Alice Roberts lost her husband, Rob, a police officer to COVID. You hear these numbers in the news and they don't sound very real, but it's very real and it's increasing and it's not gonna get better before it gets worse. Yet in some parts of the country, images like these from Ohio alarming officials. While some parents in Utah are now pledging not to get their kids tested as part of an effort to keep schools open and sports teams running. If there is a quarantine with a sports team or with any of the other classrooms, they're encouraging each other not to have their children tested. Frequent testing allows rapid identification of children with COVID and this containment actually reduces the rapid spread. The latest surge in COVID cases isn't just in the U.S. New cases are also hitting record in parts of Europe as new lockdowns and restrictions are put in place. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, local health officials reporting 140 new cases of COVID-19 and no new virus-related deaths. Right now, the seven-day moving average is 177 cases per day. Metro Health did increase the overall number of deaths in Bear County by 15, though, due to backlog reports. Hospitalizations are slowly increasing as well. 237 patients are in the hospital, 87 are in ICU. Pre-K for SA's East Education Center has been closed until further notice after four staff members and one student tested positive for COVID-19. Students at the center will transition to remote learning this week. According to Pre-K SA, contact tracing and disinfectant began as soon as staff found out about the positive cases. Other headlines this morning, a historic day on the Hill. The U.S. Senate expected to confirm Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the U.S. Supreme Court today. The vote expected to fall along party lines. Maine Senator Susan Collins, the only Republican, says she will not vote to confirm Judge Barrett. Meanwhile, Senate Democrats have said they will protest the vote, but they do not have the votes necessary to stop the Barrett confirmation.
Talks for a second pandemic stimulus bill have stalled once again. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows each say the other person is moving the goalpost. And some of the sticking points in the negotiations are involve coronavirus testing and jobless benefits. The delay makes it unlikely that a deal will be reached before Election Day. Meanwhile, China says it will impose sanctions on U.S. companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin. China says it's because those companies are providing weapons to Taiwan. A government spokesperson for China did not give details about what the penalties might be or when they would be imposed. China and Taiwan split during a civil war in 1949 and have no formal diplomatic relations. China has also claimed the sovereign nation as a territory and has threatened repeatedly to invade. The people of Chile voted to draft a new constitution. The nation held a referendum on the 40-year-old document which was written during the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Preliminary results show Chileans overwhelmingly support a new constitution with nearly 78% voting in favor of a new government. Chilean President Sebastian Piñera says the vote is a triumph for democracy. Just about 640 on your Monday morning, 73 degrees. In a new series, KSET is exploring the Tejano influence in South Texas. After the break, we're going to learn more about the trail many took from Mexico to San Antonio, which helped San Antonio grow into an important city early on. In 2004, the U.S. Congress passed legislation authorizing El Camino Real de los Texas National Historic Trail. This trail system was the way many traveled from Mexico to the eastern part of the state into Louisiana. This was the system, the royal highways, if you will, uh, for New Spain uh, that would traverse from uh, throughout Texas uh, as the Spanish began to uh, develop uh, what was then an unpopulated area, uh, only threatened by um, the French. Uh, they needed a system of, of transportation, if you will, for the military, for the religious, for the civilians, supplies, on and on and on. The Camino Real would become very important to San Antonio and its economic development. All the roads come here and then they emanate out to Nacogdoches, uh, Goliad, San Saba to the north. So if you look at a map, San Antonio becomes like the hub of the, the wheel, if you will, the spokes and all the roads are emanating. San Antonio becomes an important military and trade center, a political hub and destination for religious matters. Many of the roads still noticeable today as some have developed into major highways and others still lead to the cities and towns they are named after. Our heritage and our uh, history is rooted in this road. Uh, that uh, Our ancestors came here as military men, as uh, officers, as quartermasters, uh, artisans, masons, you name it. Uh, and they began to physically build and design and construct and engineer the roads, uh, the, the missions, the buildings that we honor today historically. And preservation is ongoing through El Camino Real de los Texas National Historical Trail Association. Parts of the trail are marked and can be found from the border to East Texas. It's all a part of the important Tejano history that reveals the true development of the Alamo City. This is our moment, this is our time, and this is our road. Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And again, that was a part of our new series, Tejano Moments. For more, stay right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. It is now quarter to seven. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Steph, we still have one accident up there by the airport. It's tying folks up just a little bit. Two left-hand lanes blocked of westbound 410. So if you're headed from 35 up on the northeast side, back over towards that I-10 410 interchange, you will have a little bit of a slowdown. Looks like we're getting traffic backed up all the way to Broadway. So it's just a matter of time before it grows all the way back to Nacogdoches uh, until we can get those lanes opened up. There you see all the flashing lights with the flare line blading off traffic to the far two right-hand lanes. Just remember, folks, Reduce that speed, put away those distractions, both hands on the steering wheel. Yes, sir. Nice. Mike Osterhage, how cold is cold? Mm -hmm. Well, going to have to put some logs in that fireplace. I yeah. See. That's a Halloween Yes, I love that. Oh, and, and sort of Thanksgiving and fall, I see. Uh-huh, beautiful. And yeah, and 
get some uh, get some logs to, to throw in there, especially for tomorrow, because it is going to be just one of those sort of raw days. This morning is just murky out there. We've got a ton of humidity. We've got very warm temperatures, and as you can see, we've got a little bit of uh, light rain, mist, drizzle, whatever you want to call it. Not much is showing up on uh, on radar at all, and uh, yeah, just a little bit here and there. Now we've got a lot going on up to the north of us. Obviously, up there in the Panhandle, there is some mixed precipitation. There may be uh, something a little bit uh, frozen up north of the hill country in the next uh, couple of days late tomorrow, but nothing around here. But yeah, cold air has definitely invaded a good chunk of the country. Temperatures right now, 73 in town, but it's down to 43 now in Ozona. So 30 degrees uh, colder and it's going to continue to get colder and that cold air will continue to move on in here. Amarillo is still holding at 21 degrees and 37 up the road in Abilene. Plus you've got the winds on top of that. These are sustained winds about 15 20 miles per hour and it's going to be very breezy once that front moves on through here. Uh, it's going to be obviously sooner in parts of the hill country here in town about dinner time. Winds will shift around, temperatures will be dropping down, and we'll still have some rain around here, though, and we'll still keep that rain sticking around all the way into uh, tomorrow and even uh, on Wednesday. Then it'll start to taper off. Two below right now in Casper, Wyoming. Single digits up around Denver. They had a ton of snow up in portions of the uh, the Rockies. The nice thing is not only do we have colder air, and it is going to be sticking around for a few days instead of the last couple of fronts where they lasted what a day, day and a half, something like that. And also we have some rain. Now, I don't think this is going to be any sort of a, a huge amount. It's not going to have a lot of heavy rain around here, but at least we're going to have some rain because that low is developing there. And there could be a couple of pockets where it's a little bit heavier than that, but that low is going to be developing, kind of sliding across the area over the next couple of days and then scooting on out of here. And then that high is going to build in and that's going to help keep the cooler air around here, but also give us plenty of sunshine latter half of the week and in through the weekend. 78 degrees today at noon, a couple of showers scattered about the area and then a high temperature up to 80. A few showers, then the front moves through obviously sooner in the hill country. Dinner time or so around here, winds will shift around to the uh, north to northeast. And tomorrow, start off 48 up to 55. That's it. It's wait, wait, nice. wait, back up. Showers, yeah. Tomorrow morning, 48, 48, 46 on Wednesday morning, 55 for a high temperature tomorrow. We'll be ready. Kind of, kind of damp and chilly and. I know we've been asking for the cold, but let's not overdo it here. <laughs> I don't want to hear any. I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know. You've heard it for months. I it, understand. It'll be okay. It'll it'll be warm again. I'm I'm sure. That's also. That's also yeah, 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 everybody's been talking about the war. No, no, no. Just let go with cold. We'll enjoy mm -hmm. it. Thank How you. How about Mike. this, Mike? Ready? Yep. Sixty days till Christmas. Ah. A handful of days till the, we turn the clocks back. So I that's know. What I, Let's I know. get to ba Halloween first. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. 649, 73 degrees. And when it comes to buying or selling a home, we all know it's important to have a quality inspection. Tomorrow on GMSA, the things you should be looking for and the questions you should be asking before hiring anyone. Outside with live cam. News you need to know before you go is coming up at another peak at Time Saber traffic as we approach the top of the hour. You're watching GMSA. And the news you need to know before you go, police searching for suspects involved in a shooting in downtown San Antonio happened at the Days Inn over on East Houston and Bowie around 1.30 this morning. Police say a woman staying at the hotel was in the parking lot when three cars pulled up. They say some people jumped out and then assaulted and shot the woman in the arm. Now the suspects drove off and the woman was taken to Bamsey. Police are also searching for a driver in a hit and run. They say it happened around 1130 last night in the 200 block of Wiedner. That's on the northeast side near I-35 and Randolph. Police say a man was walking from the I-35 frontage road down Wiedner when a driver hit him with a vehicle. That driver took off and the man was taken to University Hospital where he remains in serious condition. Bear County Elections Office will hold a news conference today after an advocacy group for the Heart of Hearing said Bear County is not doing enough to help deaf voters. The nonprofit No Barriers Communication says many in the deaf community do not have equal access while voting. Right now, the organization says voters are being told to go to the elections office on Frio Street to vote. 
With eight days until Election Day, we are entering the final week to vote early, and there are extended times to go to the polls this week. Today through Friday, early voting locations will be open from 8 in the morning until 10 at night. Early voting ends this Friday, October 30th. If you don't vote early, you must wait until Election Day to cast your ballot. You can find a sample ballot and early voting locations right now on our website, the Vote 2020 page of KSET.com. About 5 till 7. Let's go to Time Saver Traffic and Officer Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mark. And then right now, folks, as we take a look, we still have that accident in the clearance stages up there by the airport. That's affecting the westbound main lanes, and it appears as though maybe they uh, are just sending out some additional flares. So you can expect this uh, accident to be with us just a little while longer. Two left-hand lanes are blocked at this time. Let's move over to some other areas. That's 35 at Randolph. You're looking at the northbound main lanes at 35 at Randolph, headed up towards 604. Very, very heavy congestion. Mike? And most of the roads are wet out there. We've had some rain overnight, a lot of mist and drizzling. As you can see, it's just kind of a murky morning. And we've got a few drops on the, the lens over there by 10 at 410. And a lot of this is just some clutter right around the radar site. But as you can see, there have been a few little little sprinkly showers moving on through. It's definitely on the light side, and this is going to be the situation throughout much of the day. 73 here in town. We've been holding steady all morning long, but we are starting to see some 40s northwest of the hill country. Now, the front's going to move in, obviously, sooner in the hill country late this afternoon. Here in town, about dinner time, we hit 80. Then the wind's going to shift around northeast, 15, 25. Temperatures will be dropping off. And tomorrow, we start off in the uh, mid to upper 40s. 55 for a high temperature, windy, a couple of showers around here. What a wonderful day. Yeah. 46 on uh, Wednesday and then 65 for a high temperature. And after that, the nice fall weather is going to stick around all the way through the weekend. We're ready. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9.